Hey everybody, this is Kindle from Recording Lounge, and I'm here today doing a video about polarity and phase. Now, you might also notice this is my first YouTube video on the official Recording Lounge podcast YouTube channel. And uh, thanks for being here. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you're not familiar with the podcast, go check us out on iTunes or on any of your favorite podcast uh, listening apps or websites. It's a free podcast about uh, recording, engineering, mixing, producing, those types of things. I've got a great community of people that uh, listen to the podcast. Hey, all you guys out there. Um, so I hope you enjoy this video. I'm here to clear up something that I got a request to do a podcast over, but I just realized, you know what? I'm about to do the YouTube channel. This is the perfect first video. And it is the difference between polarity and phase. Now, they are very closely related, but it's just so much easier to show visually than it is to show, uh, to talk about on a podcast. Um, so let's go, let's just go for it. First things first, let's talk about polarity because this is the easiest one to understand. Polarity is simply a reversal of positive and negative terminals or positive and negative points. So, Take, for example, your home stereo system where you've got a speaker that has a red wire and a black wire. Flipping the polarity would be equivalent to flipping those, running red to black and black to red, rather than you're supposed to run red wire to red terminal, black wire to black terminal, right? Um, that is flipping the polarity. So let's talk about this. Let's duplicate this waveform. This is a one hertz simple sine wave, okay? And... Let's reverse the polarity. Now, ironically, Nuendo and Cubase call them phase reverse, which is not technically correct. I mean, it is, but it isn't. Um, so look what happened here. Where it's positive up here on the original 1 hertz, it is negative here. It's negative here. It's positive here. Positive, negative, negative, positive, etc. You can see it. I think all of us understand what happens when you flip the polarity switch on your mic preamp or, you know, what have you. But people often confuse this with phase and phase shift, and they're not the same thing. So let me first explain phase, and then I'll do a different example to uh, go into a little more detail. So a phase shift happens when, let's say, two microphones are on a piano, and they are receiving the same signal at different times, causing comb filtering and phase shifting and blah, blah, blah. And basically, you can visualize it as if this was distance 1 and this was distance 2. So a phase shift is like that. Now, a phase shift like this is a 180 degree phase shift, which to many people looks like a polarity flip, but it's not directly because this part of the wave here is right here. And this part of the wave is here. Whereas if this was a polarity flip, this part of the wave would be here, but then reversed in polarity. So, for example, if this might make it more clear, if you have a 180 degree phase shift, or in this case, let's say a 90 degree phase shift that looks like this, and then you reverse the polarity, this is a 90 degree phase shift and a polarity reversal. And it looks like this, okay? Even if you do this, which you say, oh, they're in phase again. It's like, well, the waves are in phase, yes, but it's not so simple. Um, you can't just flip a polarity switch on a mic preamp and expect everything to be perfect, okay? It's, it's so much more complicated than that. And I will explain why. It's that... Polarity flipping is not frequency dependent, regardless of uh, what the frequency is or how loud it is, any of those things. All it does is flip the positive and negative parts of the wave, which may create a better phase relationship between, say, two mics on a piano. But phase shifting is frequency dependent and the cancellations caused by that are frequency dependent and what I mean by that is they change with each frequency so I'm gonna bring up these other hidden files here what I've got is a 1 Hertz wave a 4 Hertz wave and a 9 Hertz wave okay just I pick three random frequencies uh, that are all kind of different from each other um, and then I have duplicates of those 
So let's talk about our polarity first. Again, this is the easy one. So you'll notice this is where it's positive here. Blue, blue, they're both positive. On the green here, positive, positive, right? They're lined up. They're just duplicates. Positive, positive on the yellow. Now let's flip the polarity on these three. All right, process, phase reverse, polarity reverse. Now notice what happens here. We've got where the green is positive up here, it is negative down here. Where the blue is positive up here, it is negative down here. Where the yellow is positive, it is negative down here. So regardless of these frequency, you know, these different frequencies, the polarity is merely a flip of positive and negative parts of pressure on this wave, you know, technically speaking. Um, so let's uh, now look at a phase shift, okay? When we shift the phase... Let's say uh, we had two mics on a piano and one of them was moved uh, six inches farther than the other one. Let's say this was six inches worth of time delay. And of course, that's a very, very small amount, not even a millisecond, right? Um, but still, let's say this is what's happening. Because again, these are very large waves here, one hertz, right? If this were 1K or 5K, there would be many, many more positive and negative points of pressure here than are, that you're seeing now. Uh, as you know, you know, when you record something, it doesn't look like this. It looks all jagged because it is a complex wave. It's made up of thousands and thousands of these across the spectrum of the instrument, whatever that may be. So a piano is a very broad spectrum instrument. So imagine, you know, you've got like your low, a low frequency. Imagine this is like a more mid frequency and this is a high frequency just for purposes of this demonstration. Um, I know they're all subsonic, but look what happens when we shift this. Now, we've shifted this wave and where this is negative, this is positive, but it's not quite lined up. Um, same over here, you know, uh, it's, it's positive up on this one but it's not quite lining up. It'd be more like that, right? But, um, so that's our one hertz. Now let's look at our four hertz. Well, this one doesn't line up at all. When this one's positive, this one is uh, almost crossing over to the zero line here. Um, and our nine hertz wave is lining up perfectly, totally in phase. So what you can see is that if you imagine thousands and thousands of frequencies made up in a piano or an acoustic guitar, a vocal, a snare drum, anything, these are not always going to line up. Whereas a polarity reversal, the only thing it can really do is make the relationship between, you know, microphone A and microphone B a little bit more pleasing to the ear, but they can't really fix the problems that have come from phase cancellation. Uh, in in these areas. Now, the primary frequencies, if you flip the polarity on the channel, um, that can help, and sometimes uh, it will it will uh, undo the, some of those cancellations, but it will create other cancellations. Where there were additions before, because you flip the polarity, there will now be cancellations. The trick is, you know, does do the cancellations make more sense being here or here? I'm sure we've all experienced that situation with the top and bottom snare mic, and often you have to flip the polarity on the bottom snare mic. And you're still experiencing cancellations when you flip that polarity. The only difference is when you flip it one way, the cancellations sound good, and when you flip it the other way, the cancellations sound bad and take all the body out of your snare. So when you flip this, or when you shift this in phase, these frequencies might not line up. They might cancel. They might add. Notice if I try to line up uh, these green waves here, these line up, but now the blue ones don't, and neither do the yellow ones here. And so it, it can get very complicated. These are three frequencies. And like I said, with any pretty much any instrument that we record, there are thousands and thousands of frequencies that, you know, that you're hearing from that instrument at one time from 20 hertz all the way up to 20K, right? So it could be any amount of that depending on the instrument. Um, if it's something like a guitar, it might be from, say, 70, 80 hertz. I mean, the low E on a guitar is, uh, is 82.5. So 
all the harmonics above that, depending on how much distortion is there, could go all the way up to, I don't know, 10K? I mean, it, not very loud up there, but it'll still be there. And so imagine this happening over a huge spectrum and how many phase cancellations could exist and why phase and polarity, you know, phase shift and polarity flip are not the same thing. Anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this short video on phase and polarity. Check out the Facebook page, facebook.com slash recording lounge. And check us out on iTunes and uh, any of your p favorite podcast apps or websites. If you have any questions, comments, please email me, recordingloungepodcast at gmail.com. Thanks.